Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Learning Japanese. In this video, we are going to do our very first resource review. Basically what this uh, mini-series of this series is going to be is just uh, trying out uh, the many resources on how to learn Japanese, whether that be online or offline, and giving an impression of how uh, well they are in their educational usage. So. The uh, resource that we're going to be covering in this video is called Kanji no Owari, and this is going to be an Android um, RPG game that you can play on your mobile phone, and the goal of it is basically to help Japanese speakers or English speakers learning Japanese to memorize Kanji. So Kanji no Owari, which translates to Kanji's End or the End of Kanji, this is a game released by Sekai Project, and the description that I'm reading here on my computer right now says that this game is supposed to help uh, people with their kanji with a focus on JLPT kanji characters. So people who are looking to one day take the JLPT test and uh, pass it might consider this a good plus. And so just a quick disclaimer uh, before we get into this, this is not a sponsored video uh, in any way. This is just something that I came across coincidentally and uh, decided it to be the first iteration in this mini series that we've been planning for a while, resource review. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying the free version of this game. The full version actually comes at a cost. I believe it costs $5 on the uh, App Store. Anyways, let's uh, get started with this. Let's, uh, let's get a get an idea of this uh, game, Kanji no Owari, which uh, looks pretty uh, interesting from the get-go. It has some uh, nice production values for a mobile game and an uh, educational game at the least. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna press start and see what happens. And uh, I have no idea what's going on really. Character status... Okay, so this seems to be our character. We're going to go to the world map. And, uh... Okay, so what I've just found out is that they only have two available maps in the free version of this game. Uh, presumably the first two starting points, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at level one. This one is level one, because it looks more peaceful and safe. Um, and so we get to choose modes, readings, or meanings. So what we're gonna go with is meanings this time around. And our game is starting. So what it looks like is that the game shows you a list of the kanji characters that it's going to be testing you on in the uh, right before the round. So here we have the kanji characters for um, front previous, ago previous, book, read, and heaven. So we are going to um, play some kind of memorization game with these five kanji characters. So let's see what happens. Um, so this is, we're gonna click on this and it means earlier. So we click on that. This means um, In the future. So we click that. This means read. This means uh, heaven or sky and In the future uh, Seeing some repeats here, which isn't too bad because you do oops accidentally pressed whoa uh, What was I saying? Uh, yeah repeats aren't bad in this case because um that's basically the key to learning kanji characters is uh, rinse and repeat and I'm kind of dying by talking so let's just uh, play for a bit here without saying anything. Read. Uh, front. Uh, read. Um, further? Previous? Previous. Read. Uh, for... and there we finished the first round and so now it's just going to give us a new list of kanji characters. So we have, look, this timer right here, you have that much time to memorize it, which is kind of hard for uh, brand new uh, readers, I would assume. So this game looks like it's uh, more tailored to people who have actually established um, a studying of Japanese already for a decent amount of time at least. So what, left, food, mother, and this one again. So we see here that this one is left, this one is food of some sort, meal, what? This one is mother. This one is further ago. Uh, meal. Luck road. Down. Whoa, what is this? What? Uh, what? What? Uh, meal. Former. What? Which one of these dudes has the most... Mother. Is that following? Mother, so what is this? River, two, prior, ma, 
other. Let's kill this guy, he's annoying. He's ugly too. <laughs> Okay, so let's just kill this ghost looking dude. Okay, so now we're moving on again. So we have a new set of kanji characters. What is this? This is time. So hour. This is tree. Thursday. This is uh, handwriting. Wow, this is getting pretty hard now. Uh, current. This is hour. This is Thursday. This is. Present, this is vehicle, this is penmanship, this is tree, this is time, o'clock, this is uh, handwriting, this is car, and there. So that was what the second round, and it was getting pretty hard for even myself, which is pretty crazy. Um, so let's move on. Okay, so that was three rounds, and I guess it's pretty unrelenting. Uh, uh, I guess we'll do another one. <laughs> okay, so we are now um, trying the other mode for this game, which is the readings instead of the meanings. So here we see that the list of kanji characters, instead of meanings, we have all of their readings. I'm not sure if they're all of them, but uh, most of them. So we see the first one is either Gaku or Manabu. So now we're going to see how effective or sample how effective this is. So we'll see here learning, of course, Gaku. Here, Kuruma. Okay, so fast forward, and we basically tried um, the entire game to the extent that we could uh, using the free version as opposed to the paid version. And so let's uh, review what the uh, pluses and minuses of this resource. So we'll start with the pluses, and obviously the first one is probably that since this is a game, there's a really good enjoyment factor to it. You can kind of get immersed into the gameplay, and to a certain extent you'll want to keep playing to reach the next level or reach the next boss. So that sort of subliminal motivation will obviously be a good effect on you putting more time into uh, memorizing kanji. Though that being said, the game's mechanics aren't perfect. There are some points where you get kind of too into the game. Sometimes there are cases in which you kind of ignore the uh, learning aspect of it and uh, instead of trying to get the right answer and memorize that, you kind of just focus on trying to kill the monster as soon as possible. So you might just start clicking away and not really uh, get anything good out of the educational aspect of it, but uh, that's not a too common occurrence. Another negative has to do with the uh, two modes that we saw earlier, the meanings mode and the readings mode. I'm inclined to almost say that the meanings mode is almost useless because it doesn't really give you the kanji characters as they are in words. So they don't give you whole words and so even if you do memorize the meaning of a kanji, uh, theoretically speaking that could help you absolutely in no way in terms of knowing what actual real words mean. You only know what the fragments of them mean and maybe you could piece it together yourself but you won't know what the word itself means. So a recommendation that I would maybe give to the game developers themselves is to actually start using full words, stuff with more than just one kanji character. So two kanji characters, three kanji character words, four kanji character words, so people can actually memorize uh, legitimate words as opposed to just these morsels of words. So yeah. As for the readings mode of this game, that's much more useful. You can um, learn the various readings of certain kanji characters. So when you do see those morsels of kanjis in words that you don't know, you can at least be able to read it. And in my opinion, being able to vaguely read a word is more important in Japanese than being able to really, really vaguely know its meaning because sometimes when you combine two kanji characters with different meanings and you expect it to mean something, that word, it's not just gonna do, it's just not gonna do that because even though they represent ideas, when you combine them and mix them up and stuff like that, um, they can become drastically different. So I would definitely recommend the reading mode of this game more so than the uh, definition mode. And so now, cumulatively speaking, whether or not I would recommend this uh, resource to uh, Japanese learners in general, I would probably have to say no. I think you should maybe try it if you're uh, one of the people who can really get an edge off of learning from resources that implement a kind of gameplay feature. I want to say that a game like this will um, help people get into learning Japanese, but 
because of its difficulty that I just experienced, you're actually gonna have to know a decent amount of kanji before you even go into this game um, to actually play it to a uh, decent level without dying uh, over and over, I think. So that kind of eliminates its uh, advantage of being able to um, get people who are just starting to learn the language. Uh, there's kind of a standard that you have to meet here unless you just feel like playing and uh, losing and using that experience to want to learn Japanese so you can actually beat this game. But all in all, uh, Kanji no Awari, this is um, a free resource. So if you want to try it, by all means do, it's um, available readily on your mobile device. And you can just kind of uh, pop it open uh, whenever you have free time on the bus or, or just waiting with your phone in your hand and uh, see how this uh, suits your um, method of study. And so yeah, this has been a resource review of uh, Kanji no Awari which is a simple Japanese language learning game that helps people memorize uh, JLPT kanji characters. And with that, uh, look forward to the uh, next resource review that this channel covers and until then, keep on uh, studying.